Hello everyone. It is time to announce fall $100 headshots. Before I do the formal introduction for this, I want to introduce this fall's $100 headshot partner is Eyes Open Iowa. And here to represent Eyes Open Iowa is Emily Gillen. She is the lead trainer for Eyes Open Iowa. And give us a little bit, like give us the intro. What is Eyes Open Iowa? And then I'll come back around to what is $100 headshots. So Eyes Open Iowa is a state-based, but really regional and national reaching organization that works to make sure schools and community-based organizations have the support that they need to really provide excellent sex ed, um, whether that's someone coming in to provide sex education or having educators really equipped with the best practices. Yes. Okay. So I am aware that sex ed can be a touchy topic and I have known Emily for a long time. I really respect how she moves through the world, the way that your organization takes care of our teens. And when I thought about this fall's partnership for $100 Headshots, I could think of a cause no more worthy than what you are doing because I have a team of all women and every single woman on my team has said, yes, this is important. Our state needs this and we want to put our weight and our time and our finances behind it. So this is an ivory house. Like we are all excited to partner with eyes open. Uh, and we're so thrilled. And yes. Honest. Yes. So what happens with hundred dollar headshots? Just so you all know, um, each, fall and spring, but this time we're doing fall. Each fall, um, we partner with an organization. We open up 80 $100 headshots, which if you know me means that's a little discount for the people saying yes. Um, you come in and then from each person who says yes to a $100 headshot, we give $10 to the organization. We also, if you choose to get additional files, are gonna give $5 to the organization. And we also do a lot of brand awareness, issue awareness so they'll be you can read the blog you might actually be on the blog right now because <laughs> um, our goal is to not just give money but i think a lot of times you know the power can be shedding light on an issue that's so important for sure and sex education we are a hundred percent behind uh supporting this so tell us why do we need mm -hmm. sex education for our young adults so i i know sometimes just having the word sex mm -hmm. in anything uh, can have this moment of, oh my gosh. Um, but, but sex education is yeah. like any other life skill education. Mm -hmm. um, I like to equate it to driver's ed. Mm -hmm. That That mm -hmm. is something that I was required to have. <laughs> and it's a life skill that most people will utilize at some point in their life. Yes. And so having that as not only something that's in the policy and procedure at a school, but that we know that it's being done well and that educators are really supported through it because oftentimes some people will get a very old dusty curriculum <laughs> that doesn't make them feel supported and yeah. it can be really daunting for good reason. Yeah. Um, and so we wanna make sure people feel supported in that, have really excellent training mm -hmm. uh, and, and get to really provide this education that young people deserve. Yeah, so do you partner with schools? How, do, how mm -hmm. does Eyes Open work? logistically. Yes, yes, we've got so many lanes of support, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I work in the training department, mm -hmm. and so that means we work with educators, community-based organizations, counselors, mm -hmm. really any youth serving professionals mm -hmm. that either teach sex ed or have sex and sexuality come up in mm -hmm. their professional work, and especially like navigating those issues with young people. So we get to work with them in that way and really build their capacity and um, really competence around mm -hmm. sex and sexuality topics. Yeah. And then we also have an implementation team that if you don't have the capacity mm -hmm. of having an educator mm -hmm. in your um, school or your organization, that implementation team can go in and provide evidence-based curriculum that really uh, is excellent and I could gush about for a really long time. Um, and then of course we help with policy and that like more back-end uh, piece of making sure this is a sustainable program. Yeah and something that the community can buy into. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still kind of stuck on your mm -hmm. metaphor for, you know, we all have driver's mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. And yet when it comes to our bodies and it comes to our sexuality, we have varying levels dependent on family, school, mm -hmm. everything, depending, depending on our circumstances as to what we receive mm -hmm. for the, the bodies we will live in our whole life. 
And I think if I think back to my early adolescent driving record, let's be honest, <laughs> it was really terrible. I backed into everything. My Same. yeah, my family will tell you I backed into the trash can regularly. <laughs> Um, and you know, I went to driver's ed, like I passed mm -hmm. team, I passed, and yet I consistently failed at the basic mechanics. And when I think about how perhaps that extrapolates very, very clearly to sex ed, it's like we, if you have nothing, I can imagine that those mistakes are abound and frequent as, as we see, as we see. <laughs> Um, that happening. So one of the statistics I thought was really interesting when I was reading your information is that teen birth rates have actually gone down mm -hmm. since 1991 when it was at its highest rate, like significant decrease. It was like 73% or something crazy like that. So sex ed is working. Yes. Tell us more about why sex ed is working. Yes. <laughs> so we had really, first of all, an infusion of funding that mm -hmm. provided mm -hmm. excellent curriculum that mm -hmm. we knew worked really well and still does work really well. Mm -hmm. And that was comprehensive. It was age appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, it's inclusive and up to date uh, now. Yep. And it really gives the health information that young people need. Yeah. Um, and I, I think like sometimes that's the misnomer in mm -hmm. sex ed as well, mm -hmm. like what it is. Mm -hmm. And it is information, right? Mm -hmm. We. We want to have information, access to resources, and really normalizing the lines of communication between young people and their parents and caregivers yeah. to continue the education so that outside yeah. of driver's ed, you've still got yeah. other people helping yeah. you learn to look in your rear view mirror. <laughs> well, what I am hearing is that you guys provide data, accurate information, and then it opens up the door so that they go home and say, well, you know, the, the values part perhaps is, is still directed at home because you know, you, even if that came in in a school place, the home really has the narrative there, yes. as it should. But having data points to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, what's up with all this? Mm -hmm. How do you know, how do we do this as a family? I mean, when I think about one of the benefits of growing up in the home that I did is that I could talk about sex mm -hmm. with my mom. Like when the time came for me to, to figure out how I was gonna safely approach the topic and mm -hmm. how I was gonna keep my body safe, I already had access. And I know that I am perhaps special and perhaps that's not as common. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're even going into spaces and opening up that conversation, perhaps you know, what I see is the confidence to go home and say, well, we're talking about this at school. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. Well, so we believe that parents and caregivers are the primary sex educators for a young person. Mm -hmm. And we know that just like educators aren't given all the tools that they need mm -hmm. often for how to facilitate these conversations, yeah. parents and caregivers aren't either. Yeah. That, just like the manual, when a kid is born, <laughs> um, this is how you do it. Yeah. Like, we don't have anything like how do you have hard conversations or um what does this look like when the talk is actually maybe more of a lifelong conversation yeah. um and so we really want to make sure that we're opening the lines of communication mm -hmm. but also making sure parents and caregivers have those discussion questions or a mm -hmm. heads up about what's going to get asked at the dinner table mm -hmm. whatever it may be to really mm -hmm. empower those conversations because we yeah. we really believe in that a lot absolutely and that you know we opened this like we're going to talk about sex. <laughs> you know, we're like adult women. Yes. We're yes. like, the, you know, this is not the most uncommon topic in yes. our lives. That you do this uh, for a living. For a living. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yet there's this moment of like, there's awareness. We're, yeah, we're about to talk about this. And if we're having that moment, I can't even imagine, or I can, you know, I can actually dial it back yeah. to when I was a teen and how scary that topic was and how few people I personally discussed that with and and how lucky I felt that I had I don't even I honestly don't even remember if I had sex education yeah. in high school but I know that I had someone at home that was an advocate for that topic mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate what you're doing um, it's, I mean you were just the clear and obvious you and eyes open Iowa was a clear and obvious choice for $100 headshots is there anything else that our audience gets to know that makes you guys special? How can they utilize you? What what do, what do they get to know? Excellent question. So really, I empower everyone watching to ask questions about what sex ed looks like in your district. Mm -hmm. um, or if you've got young people, ask them what they've heard about sex ed. 
and figure out what the gaps are either for you as a person who cares about a young person mm -hmm. or you as a member of a community that has a school <laughs> uh, or even like thinking about what we have as state policy for sex ed we'd be we'd love to talk to you more about that and really we want to reach whoever you are however works best for you. So if you are um, at a community-based organization and see needs for conversations around sex and sexuality, but that's mm -hmm. a very large, mm -hmm. <laughs> large mm -hmm. range of topics, mm -hmm. but um, we can partner with you for training. We can help get our implementation team into a classroom if you need immediate support. Um, or if you're a parent and caregiver, we got resource lists about a bunch of different books we recommend. So we really just wanna make sure that whatever baby step toward improved sex ed or improved sexuality conversations um, can be happening in schools and in homes. Yeah. We wanna help you through it. Yeah. One other factoid yeah. that has to come into play um, is kind of dispelling the myth that talking about sexual education creates more sexual activity. Mm -hmm. And actually all of the federally funded uh, studies show the exact opposite. Can you shed a little bit more light on that? Yeah, one? that's probably the most uh, common misconception, mm -hmm. right? Like we mm -hmm. say the word sex. <laughs> it's our, all of a sudden I'm going to put the idea in somebody's head, right? <laughs> Turns out if you've ever been a 16 year old <laughs> human, are we clear that the idea doesn't generate from education? <laughs> Especially as human with a small computer in their pocket. Yeah. Now, yeah. Right? Whoa. So, so that's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> but it's, it's really this idea that, um, it, we've got research that shows that young people who receive sex ed that mm -hmm. is honest, accurate, age appropriate, mm -hmm. it's going to decrease the um, frequency of sex that they have as a young mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. decrease the number of sexual partners they have, mm -hmm. and actually delay the onset of yeah. sexual activity. And so that is probably some of the, or those are some of the data points that we refer mm -hmm. to most often when people have that initial yeah. concern, uh, which is valid because yeah. It's not my job to know about that. It's yeah. understood that that's kind of that misconception that's in the air. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah. I just think it's one of those, those, again, when we're thinking about taking care of our youth, taking care of our bodies, um, you know, the, the value conversation, of course, gets to happen in the home space as it, as it did for me. But if a value is around taking care of the body, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, I just think that knowing more about your body, how it functions, how it functions with a different person is the best way to make an informed choice about whether you are ready for that or not. Yes. And that's what it's all about is empowering through education. Yeah. Right. Uh, can we high five with that? Always. Okay. Just a little <laughs> high five for the finale. So if you are watching this, this means that you are ready to say yes to $100 headshot. So if you are yes to $100 headshot this year, and again, remember, um, you're probably watching this a couple weeks before it goes live. The best way to get a $100 headshot is to be on the email list because team, those usually sell out in 48 hours. There's only 80 slots. We are, we are specific and we stick to our 80 slots because this could go on forever. Mm -hmm. So jump on the email list. Um, Stick around for more information. We'll be talking about Eyes Open Iowa quite a bit over the next few weeks. Um, and we hope that you join our passion for this cause. Emily, thank you so much. Thank you. For doing what you do, for being willing to have this conversation, and for putting it out here um, in such a kind, compassionate way. I truly believe that this is what our teens get to have. So. It's an honor to get this space, and it's an honor to talk to you all. Yes. Bye. Bye.